All right. That is a smallmouth. It's funny that fish hit and I couldn't move it. I couldn't move it, I thought I was on the bottom. That's a good problem to have. Coming up in this episode of The New Fly Fisher, the weather is changing. For the better, it has been freezing. It's mid-May and things are a-changing. I mean, it's supposed to be hot this week. We've got four days of extremely warm temperatures coming our way. So, that got me to thinking. Let's try an experiment. An experiment with smallmouth bass. I wonder if I can get them to eat from the bottom all the way through the water column to taking poppers. It's gonna be a challenge, and we're gonna to have to dig deep into our bag of tricks. This big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Good fish. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, So at Anderson's Lodge, we're situated nine miles south of Sioux Lookout, Ontario, in northwestern Ontario, easily accessible from uh, Thunder Bay or Winnipeg, Manitoba, or International Falls, Minnesota. Welcome to northwestern Ontario on the shores of Abram Lake. This is Anderson's Lodge. Anderson's Lodge, a drive-to, full-service fishing lodge, offers full American plan angling, meaning it's all-inclusive with numerous fantastic fisheries such as the Lac Sewell, access to world-class fishing is easy. We're here in May. It's been extremely cold, but the weather is turning for the better. We're gonna try something new by attempting to catch smallmouth bass throughout the water column, starting slow on the bottom and hopefully working our way up to getting smallmouth to eat surface flies. Our guide during this trip is good friend and Anderson Lodge co-manager, Rick Young. Rick has been guiding Lac Sewell for the better part of 20 years and knows each nook and cranny on this large, very productive lake. And it isn't long before we come tight. Third cast, man. It's a walleye. <laughs> walleye on fly, how do you like that? There we go, first fish of the day. Not this target species, but you know what? If you want a shore lunch, that's a pretty darn good size. Yeah. Perfect size for lunch. Yeah. All right. There we go. So what I like about where we're fishing here this morning is um, to our left, we have a, a spawning bay um, where smallmouth will eventually make their way in, make their nests and, and do their business. But before that happens, when the, as the water's warming up, we're going to see big female smallmouth cruising along these flats, um, along these rocky shorelines, uh, looking for food to fatten up. So they will be moving in and out. I don't know really if we really need to move much because the fish should really be coming to us. But what I'm doing is just casting this bronze goddess, which is a crayfish pattern, to the shoreline and then just slowly working it back to me bouncing it along those rocks as it gets deeper and deeper, and hopefully we'll come across a big female smallmouth looking to eat. There she is. Just like that. Slow retrieve along the bottom. And it's a good smallmouth, man. It's a good one. This is a six weight rod with zero X tippet. They are not leader shy. Now, what temperature do you find that these fish, Rick, will, will actually get into these, into these bays and start spawning? 
We're gonna see uh, temperatures uh, about 58 to 62 degrees. We'll start seeing some beds being made. And we're at 54 now, that's a good fish. What a way to start the trip. Great fish. Oh my gosh, that's a six pound fish. <laughs> this is insane. Well, four anyway. Oh, look at what he barfed up. One, crayfish? two, three crayfish. Holy cow. Quite the way to start the trip. <laughs> Beautiful <huh>? fish, holy <laughs> jeez. Great way to start. That's an awesome, awesome <laughs> way. Slow presentation is the ticket. Master angler with a smallmouth bass, first fish of the first day. <laughs> Beautiful. So let's take a look at what this fish threw up and uh, how it fits with the fly that we've chosen. So those are the crayfish that this fish just ate. And here is the fly that we've got to go along with it. So as you can see, the size profile is pretty good. The color's pretty bang on and it tricked that big smallmouth to eat. In this water temperature of 54, do you find that these fish are schooled yet or are they solitary? No, they're not schooling yet. Uh, more uh, solitary and cruising these uh, shorelines. So we're gonna cover a lot of water, but not get uh, a lot of numbers on each spot. That's a thing with smallmouth at this temperature is that they, they generally don't come to the surface, they dig down. It's another smallmouth. Oh my gosh, it's another good one. <laughs> you made a liar out of me. <laughs> it's, it's big, it's, they're just giant. There's giant fish here. Oh, nice. And just think what's gonna happen as the water warms up, hey Rick? Yeah. This week is set to be quite warm. We're gonna, we're gonna see some great fish. Let's, oh, there we go. Well, look how fat her belly is. Ooh. These are all females, aren't they? Yeah. Fat. There we go. Another gorgeous. <laughs> look at the belly on there. Oh, she's egg laden. Ooh. Beautiful smallmouth. Beautiful laxual smallmouth. Weather's supposed to be really interesting this week to get quite warm up into the 70s and 80s, you know, mid 20s, 30s. So we're gonna have to really watch temperature as we fish. And uh, that will allow us to really adjust our presentations from slow crawling on the bottom to hopefully poppers later on in the week. Even though we're fishing this rocky beach you know, it's got lots of different sized stones on it. You know, when you're looking at the contour of the, of the shoreline, you have to extrapolate that what you see on shore is what's gonna be in the water. So we've got some bedrock here that's flat and comes out, and that's where this fish came off of. So even though you've got tons of, oh my gosh, Rick, it's another good one. Even though you got tons of structure all over, you know, you gotta pick at the spot on the spot, really, is what you're looking for. You're making it easy, man. Very nice, perfect specimen. Holy jeez, great markings. Though our first fish on fly today was a walleye, um, one of the great things about Anderson's Lodge is their shore lunch. So I'm gonna switch rigs here real quick so that I can get some walleye for lunch real fast. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> Now, how do you want me to hook them? Just through the nose? Uh, that's what I do, yeah. That'll be fine. You fished here last time. This is when you and Jordy just slammed. Oh, really? Yeah. 
fish. Nice walleye. It's over. There you go, just like that. Nice. <laughs> Made that look easy, Mark. Is that an over? Uh, no, that's a perfect lunch fish. There we go. Good job. Thanks. Shore lunch of fresh fish is an absolute must on any fishing trip. There's nothing like right out of the lake walleye to satisfy that shore lunch itch. Match it with fried potatoes and onions, as well as baked beans, it truly can't be beat. Mouth watering goodness. Rick, the low water here at Lac Sewell, how's that gonna affect these bass? Well, I, I tell you, Mark, uh, they're just not where they normally are. A lot of the areas where they normally bed uh, are actually out of the water on dry land. So now we're having to work out a little deeper, a little further away from their regular structure. That first fish this morning really told us what these fish were eating. Oh, that's a good one, man. That's a big fish. That is a big smallmouth. Hooked right in the nose and just ever so lightly picked it up. That might be bigger than the first one, Rick. He's dogging me down, that's for sure. Just after lunch. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. I don't know what you're feeding these smallmouth dudes, but that is a pig. That is a big fish. Let's take a look at this dude. Typical, right? Yeah. <laughs> today. I wish. Yeah, today they are. Yeah. Look at that beautiful striped tiger stripes below the eye. Nice. 19 and a half inch smallmouth. Perfect. Hey Mark, how have these uh, bass been hitting? They've been hitting really soft, um, such that when I strip my, my crawfish in, there's just weight. You know, I've been watching the, the color change between the floating running line and the sink tip on this, on this fly line, because if it moves at all in any indication, then, then you know, fish has picked up your fly. I haven't seen it move at all it, with all of these fish. All it is is just weight on the strip and then you know, continue to strip set and then put a little sweep in on it. And it's, it's really, really subtle, it's really soft. Without that weight, you'd never know that there was a fish on the end of your line. That's a fish. I thought I was caught on bottom, but no, that's a fish. It's run into the deep water. Where are you going and what are you? I don't think this is a bass. Oh, it yep. is a bass. <laughs> Another nice one. Well, not yet, not yet. This cold water, they are so aggressive in the fight. Uh, feeding on crayfish. <laughs> Just don't mind me. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking so long. She's almost ready. There we go. Got her. That is nuts. Another nice football. Look how fat she is. Goodness, look at the belly. Oh, Ooh. beautiful fish. Yeah. Nice. Amazing.
All right, let's take a look at the fly that's put in a clinic on these lax Sewell smallmouth bass, early season smallmouth. Uh, we saw that that first fish was throwing up crayfish, so um, what we've got is something called a bronze goddess. Um, barbell eyes, a brown body with a lot of flash, and uh, what I like about it is these big orange rubber legs. Now the cool thing about these barbell eye flies is that they don't ride hooked down. All right, what happens is the barbell eyes sink and the, the crayfish pattern actually rides hook up, so you really decrease your chances of, uh, of hooking bottom, wood, and rocks. So the setup I've got for fishing smallmouth bass here at Lac Sewell is, is pretty interesting. I've got a five weight fly line here with an intermediate sinking tip that sinks about six inches per second. Uh, the running line is floating into the sinking line. Uh, it's about six or eight feet of sink tip tied to a zero X leader, uh, which is about six feet. And then onto that, the business end is the bronze goddess. Now. Tomorrow, we're actually gonna do a very different setup for these smallmouth bass. It's gonna be a little bit more dynamic and a lot more fun. All right, Mark, it's been a great day of smallmouth fishing. Uh, I've got a couple of trophies uh, over 19 inches. The rest of our fish were all over 18. Uh, pretty good day on smallmouth. Uh, I think we should take our chance at some uh, big northern pike. There's a fish, good one too. Nice. So we've come into this back bay in search of, woo, in search of pike. And we really like this spot because this is a nurse, nursery ground for walleye. Whoa. And uh, so they'll come in here and feed on these 12 inch walleyes. And it's got some water coming in, shallow bay, warm up 66 degrees back here. And uh, this big girl came out and just smoked this perch pattern. It's a good fish. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Not done yet, maybe. Mm -mm. I'll take her. I'll take her. Nice. Ooh, nice fish. That's, that's a nice fish. Oh, <laughs> nicely done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How's that? <laughs> that's fantastic, if you ask me. Great job, Mark. The heavy girl. Nice fish. Great job. She's about to kick there. There she goes. I've got the guide trainees out right now. Yeah. So I've got them uh, scouting out an, another section of the lake that I really want to hit tomorrow. Uh, I didn't want to burn today. I, I scouted on Saturday a little bit and uh, found some spots that I was expecting to be gangbusters right now. 57 degrees, the bass are usually there first. Nothing, not a bass in sight. It was really weird. So my other spots are gonna be pretty good. I'm feeling very confident in the okay. other spots. They're a little Do you want to start deeper. with bass, start with small? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. morning. Today is a new day here at Lac Sewell and uh, we're going to try something a little bit different. The wind has kicked up significantly but it's going to be really really warm today. So we're going to play uh, a little bit off yesterday. We're going to start things off finesse 
really slow and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to fish a balanced leech under an indicator close to shore. Um, thinking that if I can put this balanced leech about a foot off the bottom, that any cruising smallmouth will easily pick it up. Now the cool thing with fishing a balanced leech under an indicator is this indicator will move with the waves, in turn causing that leech to move with the waves as well. Um, so it's a deadly technique that, uh, you know, for finesse can really, really prove effective for negative smallmouth bass. Uh, that's a very unique presentation. I've never actually seen that before, but uh, I'm definitely going to keep that in my back pocket, especially this time of year. The water's a little cool, negative smallmouth. Uh, definitely going to try this. Uh, thanks for showing me this one. Such an effective technique. The ultimate in finesse is to put a balanced leech under an ind indicator and let the action of the water move the fly. Now this is a tiny little fly and any indicator of movement set the hook. It's good fish. Now I like this spot for a couple of reasons. It's windblown, which means that any bait if there's any minnows that are out in the main basin, they're all being pushed into this island. You've got a spawning bay in behind, and these big females are getting ready to stage, or they are staging. To spawn. Great fish. All right. Rick, it works. Nice work. <laughs> Great job. There you go. Great fish. Good fish to start the day. Now, yesterday we were catching all of our fish on bronze goddess flies, which are, you know, rusty crayfish uh, patterns. So I went with a fly that was similar to that, and it did the trick on this big smallmouth bass. All right, let's go through the setup we used to catch that beautiful smallmouth bass this morning here on Lac Sewell. Um, so first of all, on the business end, this is the fly. Like I said, it, we were emulating a, uh, a, a reddish or a brownish colored crayfish. So this is a balanced leech, which means instead of the eye being at the head of the fly, the eye is actually set back a bit so that the fly rides in a horizontal position. Now the waves undulate the indicator which makes that fly dance with the size of the waves. We've got a nine foot, 11 pound or two X tapered leader. And at the, the beginning of it all, we have our indicator, which is a clear slidable small indicator that uh, you can easily adjust your depth to whatever you may need. I've got it set at about uh, eight and a half, eight feet, and uh, that did the trick. There are three ways that I like to fish this balance leech under an indicator. The first way is really easy. It's called the do nothing way. All you do is you cast it out and you watch the indicator. Any movement on the indicator, set that hook. The second way is to actually drift with the waves in your boat. So you cast it out, you have your fishing buddy, your guide or yourself, put the boat in neutral and you simply just go with the structure and you stay with a tight line onto the indicator. And again, any movement, you hit it. Always watching it, because it'll be super subtle. The third way, which proves very effective, is to cast it out, and what you do is what we call the Corona McCrawl. So you cast it out, and very slowly, with your line hand, you simply twitch it back to you, going against the, the waves generally, and what that does is that actually allows that balance leech to ride up into the column and then drift back down if you do it slowly. So you've got the action of the waves plus the pulling of, of the leech to you, which adds a little bit more action to the fly. Just the subtlest of takes, and it's game on. It's a deadly technique, absolutely deadly for smallmouth bass. Jeez. Mm. 
another good one. Well, are you a believer now? <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> and what's funny is that that's the smallest fish of the trip so far, and it's still a pretty good one. Very wow. fun. All right, let's get this guy back that here. That was impressive. I knew there'd be a fish off that rock. It was too pretty not to be. It's a little guy, but you know what? On windy days like this, any fish will play. You gotta put in your time. When things are negative, you can pick up great smallmouth bass. Catching the mail today. We, haven't, we didn't catch any yesterday. Maybe they're moving up, starting to think about making some beds. I like it. Well, I think that we've had a lot of fun with this balanced leech under an indicator technique. Let's take a break for lunch and then switch over to a two fly rig. See if we get some of these big cruising female smallmouth bass. Lunchtime. One of the important things that you need to keep in mind when you're fishing a double woolly bugger rig is when you present your cast, you know, I've got two bead headed flies on here, but they still sink really slowly. So you've got to pay attention to always keep tight to your flies with your fly line and keep your eye on the junction where the fly line meets the leader. And if that fly line jumps at all, that means a fish has picked up one of your woolly buggers and it's time to set the hook. Fish. Didn't feel the bite, saw the, the line jump, and that was it. It's a big one, and it came off, there's a set of boulders right here. Now, what we've done is as the water's warming up today, we've changed our presentation from very low in the water column to starting to raise it up. We've kept the same crayfish colors, but we've switched to woolly buggers instead of crayfish patterns. Now. So as the water's warming up, we're assuming that the fish's metabolism is gonna rise and therefore start chasing things like minnows, leeches, uh, things that are suspended in the water column. And that's what happened here today, this afternoon after lunch, a very slight presentation change and we've seen success. There we go. Atta boy. Nice fish. There we go. Top fly, yep. So as you can see, if Rick, if you want to show that top fly, the top fly actually looks like a crayfish, but could also emulate a leech as well. Beautiful. And the fish. Long fish. Nice smallmouth. Back into the females. Mm -hmm. So the rig I've got going on here this afternoon is uh, a tandem woolly bugger rig. So I've got a bead headed, sort of a reddish, rusty um, woolly bugger as the lead fly, you know, 18, 20 inches of 2X tippet to a black bead headed leech pattern woolly bugger. Um, now that fish ate the big fly, uh, but there was a partner with that fish that was going after the little one. So don't be surprised if when you're fishing a tandem rig for smallmouth bass, you actually get two on one fly rig. There's a good fish. Just wait, that's all it was. Just a little bit of wait. Oh yeah, see the follower? Oh, that's a good fish. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta love it when they don't wanna jump or they can't jump. Yeah, what a great fish. Here, I'll come and grab the fish if you wanna manage the boat here. Great bass. Big fish, just hooked in the top of the lip. Another crayfish pattern fish, long fish. Just very subtly with the eat. When the water's cold, slow things down. Well, as we've seen in the, checking our uh, electronics, we've seen the water temps have risen up about five degrees from the last spot we were fishing. 
And uh, we're seeing these smallmouth in here right now because they, uh, they spawn in this area. And right now they're staging, it's a pre-spawn. And uh, we're catching them out a little deeper than we normally uh, would target. But uh, we got warm weather right now, incredibly warm weather for May. And uh, the water temperatures are shooting up quick, so the fish are coming in and staging just off spawning areas. At Anderson's Lodge, we specialize in what we call the American plan. That's an industry known term for all-inclusive packages. So in fact, we can put groups in a 21-foot bow rider uh, with a guide and provide all of their meals. And so it's a, uh, an all-inclusive package where they just have to bring their fishing rod. Uh, we also do uh, fly-in outpost trips to one of four locations on the northeast end of Lac Sewell. So we can provide a little bit of everything. So at Anderson's, we have a variety of different types of cabins to offer folks. So depending on the group size, would determine the type of cabin that you stayed in. They're certainly as nice as some people's homes. They're comfortable, they're very, very clean, and at a standard and at a level that's probably beyond most fishing lodges. The main lodge, uh, we've got uh, our office and, and dining room uh, up at the, the front of the property. We've got 13 units with cabins that accommodate groups of two up to the biggest unit will accommodate uh, 14. So it, it opens up a total of 13 units at the main lodge. And then we also have some outposts. We have uh, 36 beds and flying outposts. So in respect to our meal service and our dining room, uh, our dining room is named Foxy's Dining. And uh, it's a lovely space where people can just relax after a long day's uh, fishing and um, relax and have a beer or have a glass of wine. Uh, we have an American plan menu that's unlike any other in, in the industry with good quality cuts of meat, um, homemade but served just at that next level. And then we do have an a la carte menu as well where we can provide other options for people uh, should they choose not to eat the American plan meal. So we uh, fish for five different species, so walleye, northern pike, uh, smallmouth bass, lake trout and muskie are all available and certain species on certain lakes and so depending on what lake you want to fish for will determine where we would have you going. Uh, smallmouth are on every lake that we fish. On Abram here going into Minnetaki and Pelican Lakes it's a great walleye lake. There's some smallmouth, there's uh, some northern pike. Black Sewell is probably our most popular lake that we fish and it's a great smallmouth fishery but it's, uh, it's known for its walleye. It's, that's a walleye factory out there. There's some great northern pike and the musky fishing out there is fantastic. I would suggest to you that coming to Anderson's is important uh, for a once a lifetime fishing experience, if not a regular fishing experience, because we take care of all of the finer details. The desire to do it right and provide that red carpet treatment. And once you come fishing here, you're not gonna wanna fish anywhere else because we do take care of all of those finer details. Our guide staff and our service staff professional on every level um, and they're going to ensure that your vacation is just as it should be perfect. to find fish with a little bit faster metabolism we've been chasing warmer water and uh, we found some water here in the 60s on a windblown point probably still cruising but in that 60 you know 60 to 65 degree water temperature the metabolism is high enough that they should be looking up and should be willing to start chasing things like clouser minnows or game changers like I've got here as their metabolism warms up they are more apt to start chasing things so that's what we're looking for here
I might go smaller. I might throw a smaller Murdich minnow on. This game changer is pretty big. And do you like white or a perch? White. Okay. Fish. Now, I was real. that's a good bass too. I was really excited about what happened there. I got my, my uh, Murdich minnow hung up on a rock here and Rick had to move me in to get it off. So I took that opportunity to throw parallel to the shoreline as opposed to vertically perpendicular into it. And uh, we found the depth that these fish are at, which is really cool. Uh, probably about 12 feet offshore and uh, got ourselves a little smally. All right. So when the water warms up, the fish start looking up and their metabolism goes up and therefore they're willing to chase flies like streamers. Right in the corner. Perfect. Not too bad, huh? Yeah. Streamer there fish? There we go. At least they're looking. Streamer fish. At least they're eating them. Yeah, that's right. Beauty. So I started out with a game changer, and uh, ooh, that's a good bass. And uh, wasn't getting any reactions at all. I'm not saying it's a bad fly, I think it's a fantastic fly for multi-species. Um, it's a great fly. But I switched to a smaller profile fly called a Murdich minnow in the same color white. And that seems to, uh, to be the ticket, a smaller profile fly. And uh, this bass ate it. Now we can already tell after three days, this fish has jumped twice. We haven't had a jumper yet, so the water is warming up and the metabolism of these fish is showing the same. Good job. Quite a difference, isn't it? Yes, uh, got a bit of a front coming in, but the water's warm. I like this new approach that we're taking here. The streamer action is picking up. Fish are becoming more active. Whereas this morning it was a little quieter, uh, way more aggressive now. And uh, I think he found the ticket. All right, so let me show you the difference here. This is the Murdich minnow, right? It's a slender profile fly, big bright eye, um, really does a trick for smallmouth bass and multi other multi-species. This is the game changer, right? Little bit of a different eye, thicker body, but all in all, a bigger fly overall. This fly is more attractive right now than this fly. That could be because the smelter's starting to run. It could be because the shiners are starting to run here and that's more of a shiner size versus this thing that's just more of a you know, juvenile perch. Fly size and profile is one key to this puzzle, one piece of this puzzle. The other one that we just figured out is that Rick actually has us closer into shore and instead of me casting perpendicular to the shoreline, I'm casting parallel to it. We are finding that these fish are 12 to 15 feet offshore. I don't know what that depth is because we're not getting the transducer in, probably around four to six feet. But what we're doing with an intermediate line is casting parallel to the shoreline, and that seems to be in their strike zone. That's two fish in two casts. Another smallie. Oh, it's a giant. It's an absolute giant. This might be the fish of the trip. Oh, that's a good fish, Rick. Let me bring him back to you here. Just a big fat female. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> nice fish. A good one. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Let's take a look at this guy. 
There you go, pre-spawn female smallmouth bass from Lac Sewell at Anderson's Resort. Anderson's Lodge is absolutely amazing for these. In the seasons that are not summertime, shoulder seasons are fantastic. There's nobody on the water. And there's tons of fish to be had. All right, let's let her go. This Murdich minnow is just lighting it up on the streamer today. Another decent, decent smallmouth. A lot more active, aren't they? Yes. Way more aggressive here. Once again, Murdich minnow. Doing its thing. Now, the next level to up your game with negative fish after the balance leech under an indicator is to emulate that with a popper dropper. Those fish are looking up. The action of the popper will get to their attention and they'll come up, they'll see the nymph or they'll see the stonefly or whatever you've got on and they'll eat it. That's what happened just here. A single pop and all of a sudden the popper went down. Popper dropper, give it a try. Okay, and take it. There you go. Nice. That's a fantastic technique. Wow. Amazing, right? Yeah. Wow. So the popper gets the attention and the nymph seals the deal. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Thanks for showing me. There's a fly. Little crayfish colored balance leech. Thanks, buddy. You make fishing fun. That's a fish. All right. That is a smallmouth. On the dropper, love this technique. Absolutely love it. Funny that fish hit and I couldn't move it. I couldn't move it. I thought I was on the bottom. I like that's a good problem to have. It's a good one too. So I've got that balance leech, that little rusty, that rusty balance leech on Ooh, below this nice green fish. popper. Good fish. And again, the popper's the attractor. And the uh, the dropper seals the deal. Hooked right in the nose. I can barely turn it, Rick, sorry. No, it works for me. It's a good smallmouth. I'm gonna come yeah. down there, come closer to you. Nice yeah. scoop, bud. There we go. Good fish. Good fish. All right, 62 degree water. Wet my hands, and let's take a look at this big girl. 
this is not an insignificant smallmouth. That is a stud at. What a fantastic fish. Look at the depth of her, huh? And fat. Took it right in the nose. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good fish. Good boy. Oh, cow. Look at the belly on her. Oh. 19 and a half inch smallmouth bass. Another trophy here at Lac Sewell at Anderson's Lodge. And that was it. The popper and the dropper. Absolutely deadly. The final piece of the metabolic puzzle when searching for smallmouth bass that have been negative, that are on the positive trend, is to fish them with surface flies, poppers. There's nothing quite like taking smallmouth bass on surface flies. And now that the sun's come out, and things are warming back up again, now's the time to put these poppers to work. Fish. So this is the fifth part of the metabolic puzzle. From bottom to top, we've managed to figure it out. These cold water fish, through this week with these warm water temperatures, we've been able to figure it out. These, don't you do that, buddy. These, these fish have gone from seriously slow and cold and negative to being able to eat off the top. This is absolutely fantastic. Nice, good job, Rick. And a boy, Woo. top water. Woo. Top water from bottom to top. How do you nice. like that? Crayfish on the bottom all the way to a frog pattern on the top. Amazing, adapt, adjust, and you too will see great success catching smallmouth bass in Northwestern Ontario. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. I wanna thank everybody for watching. What an unbelievable week we've had here at Anderson's Lodge on Lac Sewell. You know, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. What better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name's Mark Melnick. Thanks for watching, and hopefully one day, we'll see you right here in Sunset Country. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,